What's up, Babe Nation? It's Marcel. How's everybody doing today? Bonds here. We've got some good stuff here with these uh, receipts. Uh, my dogs are hanging out with me too, so sorry if they bark. They might get a little loud. Uh, let me just finish setting this up here. That's pretty much it. <laughs> but I do got to roll a blunt, so if you guys feel like sharing it, please feel free to share it out there. I'm going to throw it on Twitter real quick. We'll get started in like five minutes, if you guys don't mind. What's up, Mulder, Elevator, Frosty, Mass, everybody? Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you guys showing up. What's up, guys? I needed a whole bottle of whiskey for this one. So I'm going to grab a drink, roll a blunt real quick, and then uh, we'll get started. Yeah, I'm going to need to keep it coming on this side. <clears throat> How's audio, everybody? Audio sound all right? Need a little ASMR whiskey. Watch Chill and Buchanan's Deluxe tonight. What's up, GA boy, John, Truth, Devil, Bones, all you guys, Jen, appreciate you guys for showing up, guys and gals, Steven. Yeah, so we went ahead and did a little background work on these guys over here, Constancia, Capitello, and BTG, and I found some interesting shit. What's up, Scott, Joseph, TK, tapped in, hello, boys and girls. <clears throat> like I said, we're going to start up here probably in about two or three minutes now when this video gets to about the five-minute mark. Plan to start it up for now. I'm just going to finish rolling this blunt. It'll probably be done way before then. But no matter. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Roll up the chain. Elka doing a... Uh, Dropping some dabs over here. What the hell's going on? What's up, Milios? Buenas noches. Buenas tardes. Hello, everybody. I've been considering making videos, some videos in Spanish as well, because I've noticed some of the Spanish community uh, that doesn't speak English has been saying some things that uh, are not completely accurate. So I've, I've been considering coming up with some Spanish videos, but I'm not sure on that yet. My Spanish isn't that great to be doing this kind of financial discussions because there's so many specific words. So I think I'll stick to English for now. Soldier Boy tells us it's 47.36 in the German market for AMC. That is so solid. You're looking good, ladies and gentlemen. What an amazing run up. These futures contracts have, have, have been absolutely – I'll just start off with that before we get any further. This absolute stuff that, uh, you know uh, – Astro and some other cats have come up with. It's absolutely genius. Absolutely genius stuff. And it works out so well. These are the total return swaps that they're using. Uh, let me bust that out again. Sorry about that. This is an example of those total return swaps and the way that they're rolling it over. Right now, this goes through September 9th, and we're just barely now on uh, September 1st. As you can see, every time they do these futures rollovers, they've got a hedge, and it creates this delta gamma squeezes. These uh, delta by delta hedging, it creates these gamma squeezes, and so uh, that adds more FOMO and uh, you know more people trading, higher volume, and they're trying their best to stuff into dark, into dark pools for both AMC and GameStop. This is a chart of GameStop right here, for example. You know, so that's a quick example of the uh, current situation that we're seeing with these guys, and since they're so over leveraged and in such bad shape to the tune of $190 trillion, five times the world GDP, that they can barely keep up with this. Uh, the reason that their RRP is so high is because the margin requirements have been increased so much that the banks are, because the banks are so over leveraged and because they have so many short positions that are going south that they're getting margin call left and right. I've posted some screenshots on my Twitter and such uh, in the past, and I will continue to pull them up on YouTube and on Twitter in the future as well. Of uh, When you see like Citadel, for example, selling off all their top 10 holdings and, uh, you know, 15 to 30 minutes before the market closes. And then watching uh, that same thing happen to their 
their holdings uh, on Fridays. And then 15 minutes later, you can see crypto pump huge just to watch it pump and dump all over the weekend. And then on Sunday morning, about two to three in the morning, a couple hours before the market opens, pump uh, crypto just dumps, dumps hard. So a lot of people could potentially make a lot of money uh, if they do their own due diligence and uh, time crypto. But of course, I've uh, I've been playing a little bit with with some money, but everything else that I play right now, 99% of everything I've been doing has been uh, GameStop and AMC. And we have been making a killing. I don't know about you guys, but I have been making a ton of money off of GameStop and AMC this last couple of weeks here. Uh, you know, if you play your your cards your cards right, and you don't uh, stay away from uh, you know options that are far out of the money, and uh, when it's close to expiration, you don't want any of that. You want to make sure you uh, give yourself plenty of time. Or if you're using shares, you know you can't go wrong. Oh, you can go wrong because this is you know a casino behind a Wendy's dumpster after all. But uh, it's a lot damn a lot less risky, that's for sure. But uh, high risk comes high reward sometimes. Yeah, another reverse repo, reverse repurchase uh, record was set because banks are need so much liquidity, so they are maintaining all their money as as much money as they're possible uh, on hand at all times to make sure that these stocks get shorted. So there's a little side by side for you guys. I'm almost done here with this blunt. We'll get started. I kind of started rambling, but uh, I hope that was some valuable information. If you're not aware of what's going on, you know, that's kind of the situation that we're seeing is uh, these banks and these hedge funds are getting margin call left and right with these new phase five regulations beginning September 1st. Uh, things are going to get really, really spicy, really crazy, even more so than with these futures contracts. This is just the beginning. We're just starting to see the beginning of the next run up on this uh, three month cycle. And it happens every three months. And uh, this one between everything going on with uh, the debt ceiling crisis, the Hurricane Ida, uh, FEMA needing more money, the U.S. Treasury not having enough money to pay its bills, margin uh, requirements being at all-time highs, you know, Citadel recalling $500 million of their $2 billion investment in Melvin Capital. The list goes on. Uh, Robinhood taking a massive dump earlier a couple of days ago when uh, their investors, when their uh, institutional investors sold off um, because the SEC announced that they were going to go after payment for order flow. Mr. Gary Gensler today, August uh, August 31st, yesterday it was technically, as of this video, he announced that payment for order flow was going to be uh, looked at with a lot of scrutiny. Let's see, you guys. You know what? If someone says uh, shill pill, has, I'm not sure how you can get high to this, such gravity, the situation. I I have no choice here. I mean, I, I love smoking, but when it comes to this shit, if I'm not smoking some weed or, or having a drink, I just get so pissed off, I don't even want to talk about it. So at least this way I can make it a little fun. Because I'll be honest with you guys, I don't even want to be here right now. Uh, no offense to everybody. I love you guys and gals. I don't want to be here right now talking about this because uh, I'm not just talking about GameStop at AMC going to the moon. I'm talking about the, our, our economic stock market and real estate market crashes that are looming here in the near future to the tune of not a whole lot of fucking money because the U.S. Treasury only has $262 billion. All right, guys, are you all seeing the screen reverse image? Because I can flip it right now. Got you. Hold tight one second, okay? Everybody stand by for like 30 seconds while I flip this. Did that flip for anybody? I'm going to wait for you guys to reply. Okay, so can everybody see it? Yes. Perfectly. Thank you very much. My first time using the uh, OBS uh, screen mirroring. Anyways, moving on. The daily treasury is showing only $262 billion left in the bank today. Uh, well, that was on Friday, you know, as of Monday, August 30th. Okay. Excuse me. Today is now, since it's past midnight, the 1st. And just a half hour ago, hour ago, it was the, the 31st. So excuse me for getting the dates wrong. It is up about $20 billion from yesterday, but that doesn't mean anything. You want to know why? Because Social Security spending has already been cut. We saw that today, and we know that it's not going to get any better anytime soon. All right? They're only going to start cutting more and more programs, and that's the only reason they have a little bit more money. The tax revenue, and they didn't pay Social Security. So already people's Social Security benefits, SSA for SSA administration has been cut. Earlier in this year, we had uh, $91.5 trillion. No, it's $915 billion, excuse me, uh, this year so far. And as of August 30th, the state spent zero, two slash negative two, so zero effectively on Social Security Administration payments. What else did they fucking stop paying? 
What else is uh, good for the American people? Ah, prescription drugs. Yeah, we're not going to pay that anymore. See, marketplace payments, paying doctors and hospitals, they're not going to pay that anymore either. They're done. Look at what they were paying for the year. And all of a sudden, this was earlier in the month. This is this is today. This is the year for the year. And this is 89 billion, mind you. This is not, you know, 89,000. This is in the billions. So this 89,414 millions, which is equivalent to 89 billion, 414 million. And this month, they only spent 44 million because they knew that they're fucking broke. And this today, they spent zero. Okay. So that gives you an example of how badly they're cutting shit. So I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I just want to give you guys an example of the sad situation that our department, that our treasury is in. Okay. This is directly from the daily treasury state for the Bureau of the Fiscal Service. You can go to fiscal.treasury.gov to find this. Okay. And you can click here. You can get them in PDF, Excel format, et cetera. All right, let's move on. We've seen this at this rate, accounting for the tax revenue that is received about once a week and the FEMA spending that has just increased because I own a logistics and a transportation company, a third-party logistics and a distribution company. We do warehousing, we do uh, ocean drayage and air, air freight, all sorts of stuff like that, as well as domestic international shipping. Last month, we did zero FEMA loads. On Monday, we did five. On Tuesday, we did seven. And I bet you on Wednesday, we're going to do a lot more. What does that tell you? People are going to be, this money, this $262 million is going to go even faster than we expected. So in my opinion, the United States Treasury is going to run out of money to pay its debt and default on the United States government debt and bills between September 10th and September 15th. If they're lucky, they could squeeze out by cutting out a couple more things. They can squeeze out a couple more days, maybe get to the 16th to the 17th. If they get to the 20th, I'll be shocked. It doesn't matter because Congress doesn't come back till September 20th. And then you've got to discuss the infrastructure bill and the debt ceiling for weeks. And the last time that this occurred was uh, they spent from September 19th through October 9th before they came up with a deal. And the stock market crashed. Global equities lost trillions of dollars. The S&P lost 7, 7%. The SPY lost almost 6%. I could go on. We'll come back to that. All right, guys, you ready to rock and roll? Check this shit out. What do we have here? This is the leaked terminal from Bloomberg. All right, uh, the leaked Bloomberg terminal picture. And this Bloomberg terminal costs about $25,000 a year to be able to access. For you to tell me that the information on here showing Constancia Investimento, Capitalo Investimentos, and BTG Pactual Asset Management holding multiple portfolios with GameStop U.S. equities inside of it, for example, here they hold 22,000, here they hold 397,900, and here they hold 720,000 shares. This is all from their you know, 13F filings, and we'll get right over to those. Let's spark this up real quick. Cheers, Ape Nation. We're going to be rich as fuck. All right, check this out. Ready to rock? BTG Pactual, the largest investment bank in in Latin America. Interesting. You guys remember these unsponsored Brazilian depository receipts? I bet you do. And if you don't, go back to the video. We spent 45 minutes discussing them. Basically, a Brazilian depository receipt is a certificate. And you need six of these certificates to equal one share. One share of AMC or one share of GameStop, for example. All right, here's one, for example, a depository certificates for A2MC34. Now, these Brazilian depository receipts are supposed to be linked to shares in the United States that are held in these companies' bank accounts. They have to be held in the depository bank's accounts at all times, 100%. And they're not, because we proved in the last video that Citibank was supposed to have 500 and over $510 million, and they only have 61400 shares of AMC per their most recent 13F filing. So if retail owns the float by 85% and then institutions own the other 15%, how is there 510 million shares on top of the 513 million shares that are part of the AMC float? That immediately doubles our float. So we already have shown 100% synthetic shares on top of the actual real shares. Who owns more? These guys. More fake synthetic shares. 
BTG, Pactual Asset Management US LLC, registered with SEC. Here's their number, based out of New York, Lexington. Check this out. All their 13 Fs are here. Oh, yeah, it's these assholes. What about them? Here's their 13F. Most recent form, 13F. This is from July, I'm sorry, June 30th, 2021 is the most recent. And that was filed by Mr. Richard Gruber, the compliance officer. And we'll get to that asshole later. You can see all the information's here. 13F notice, BTG Pactual, which is owned by BTG, BTG Pactual Global Asset Management. And here's BTG Pactual Global Asset Management. They're regulated by the SEC. I have not talked about the CFTC yet. Don't worry about the CFTC information. That's not really too big of a deal. As, as, as crooked as those fuckers are, uh, you know, we'll get to that later on in another video. It's not going to slow down the mother of all short squeezes. It's not going to slow down what's happening. And it's not going to change everything else that's happening in phase five. It's still too much for them. So it doesn't fucking matter. Now that we've established who our players are, BTG Pactual Asset Management and BTG Pactual Global Asset Management, we have clear, cleared up where they actually are registered, and they're based out of the state of New York. What do we have here? This is their holdings from the 13F. What do they hold? iShares Inc., MSCI Brazil ETF. iShares Inc., MSCI Brazil ETF iShares TR, MSCI Emerging Markets ETF. How many shares? 16,008, 22,009, 476. One second. That is, I'm sorry, actually, I'm full of shit. I was in the wrong column. That's the dollar value of it. My apology. I had a feeling something was wrong. That's times a thousand. What's the value of this right here? These 22,000 shares in the, uh, that they uh, hold through all, oh, just so you can go to the top so nobody thinks I'm lying. Okay, see, this is the same one, BTG, Pactual Global Asset Management. All right, Richard Gruber, same asshole, 13F. Okay, this is the value of that right there. These 27,698, 27, sorry, where am I at? We need a comma here and here. So that right there is effectively worth almost $23 million in this one here. So that means this one is about 16.8 million. And this one's about 476,000. They're holding... 565,000 shares, calls, supposedly. They could mark shorts as long by the push, push of a keyboard. That's cooking the books. We proved that they do that already. iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF, value of $16,800,000. They have puts to the tune. They have a lot of puts to the tune of $304,700. And then here they've got further shares to the tune of 11,747. Let me see how many. Yep, and that's the amount, the actual amount of shares. So you can see right here that they're holding in these ETFs, all of these puts, and then all of these calls to hedge against them. And the reason that they need more is because they're losing so much money that they need to continually stake out, continuously take out more calls and more shares to keep from going bankrupt. And it's a never ending cycle. They can't get out of it. All right, check this out, guys. We're going to switch gears. Here comes the next one. Stay with me. Stop me if I'm fucking losing you. iShares MSCI Brazil. Check it out. About iShares, the investment seeks to track the investment results of the Brazil index. The fund generally invests at least 80% of its assets and securities of its underlying index and in depository receipts 
right? Depository receipts representing securities. What are those depository receipts representing securities? The synthetic fucking shares that Citibank and BlackRock don't fucking own, but they're supposed to own in order to maintain their positions and their legal requirements with the state of Brazil. For every six, for example, A2MC34, the stock ticker in Brazil, there are 3.08 billion certificates. And you have to divide that by six. So that equals 511 or so, right around 511, 512 million shares estimated. That's because of the price differential between the Brazilian real, which is to the US dollar, which is about six to one when you account for various factors and taxes and, and such and exchange rates. Greetings, everybody. Thank you for coming. Elka, Melios, Genesis, uh, Dean Scott, Abraham. Thank you very much. So you guys can see here, we already know who our players are. BTG Pactual, here they are showing the multiple portfolios holding those shares and their mother company as well. See, here they are, MSCI Brazil ETF, shares, calls, and puts on the emerging market ETF. Here it is, iShares MSCI Brazil, depository receipts representing securities in their underlying ind index, at least 80%, so it could be 100%. Right. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this beautiful bitch right here. You guys see what that says right there for 2020? Minus 19.02%. One could argue that it's due to COVID. One could also argue that they lost a lot of money due to various squeezes. What's their one month yield look like? Negative 6%. How strong have AMC and GameStop been this month? For MSCI Brazil. What about the other one? The MSCI Emerging Markets, negative 6.73%. How strong have AMC and GameStop been this month? Look at the three months. It's negative 4.4 because they're shorting the shit out of it, trying to keep it under control. And they can't. You can't keep these stocks under control by shorting them any further because even still when this mother of all short squeezes happens, all of these have to be bought back. Here's another one, MSCI, ACWI. And that one is almost flat for the month. They're barely making money. And you got to remember, they have a lot of different companies in this. So they're probably losing a ton of money on AMC and GameStop and making some of it back on other other uh, funds that are in this, in this uh, basket. I need to re-up on this on this whiskey, guys. Give me one second here. We are about to hit some craziness. You're not you're not going to believe next. I'll let you check that out. See that top ten constituents B three. You know who that is? Banco de Brasil, the motherfuckers that hold the depository receipts for Citibank. Banco de Brasil is directly related. They're doing some very shady shit, and I'm about to prove it to you. Not shady, illegal. And they have history of doing illegal shit. And you're going to learn that too really quick. Richard Gruber. Remember that guy from the 13F filings? He's the compliance manager at BTG Pectual. He's been working there since February 2017. And previously? Oh, look at that. He was at Goldman fucking Sachs from 2008 to 2012. During the goddamn housing market crash, after the housing market crash, because before he was at Bear Fucking Stearns and he probably ran them into the ground. This compliance manager sucks. This compliance manager is purposely letting these companies do whatever the fuck they want, so they can go fucking under like Bear Stearns and get, and then they go to work at places like Goldman Sachs and BTG to get fucking kickbacks. Oh, you want proof? Here comes some proof of kickbacks. Who's this asshole? Adriano Tenete, associate partner at BTG Pactual. It's one of the fucking owners. Get a good look at this asshole. That one was one of the motherfuckers that's trying to scam Americans, Brazilians, and people worldwide. All right, you guys can go check him out yourself. And I already sent him an invite. Let's see if this pussy accepts. Oh, no, let's see. Sent him one.
BTG Pactual Capital, U.S. Capital, broker check by FINRA, approved December 14th, 2009, not long after the market crash 2008. Gee, I wonder why. And they uh, also fall under a self-regulatory organization. Surprise, surprise. Just in case you're wondering, same asshole established in the state of Delaware because these guys are fucking crooks and the state of Delaware has very relaxed laws for opening new corporations. How we all doing, guys? We having fun? I looked up all these assholes, by the way. Found them all. This bitch has two houses in fucking New York and Brooklyn worth about one and a half million. And a couple lawsuits against her as well. But this is unre that's unrelated to this, so you can look her up if you want. We're going to call him out. Her name is Luciana Campos. And then we've got Tomas Antonio Marano, which means pig in Spanish, but he's Portuguese, so fuck him. Tomas Antonio Marano, fucking pig. Dean Sang Yoon Park and William Jesse Wilcox. These are the fucking big hotshots over there. Don't forget about Richard Gruber and this other asshole that we found, Tomas Marano. Yeah, that's the same guy. All right. Look at their capital. And that's in Real. They're a pretty small company. But you got to remember, they're owned by a company, which is owned by a company, which is owned by a company, which is owned by a company. This asshole's got 12 years experience working with two firms. Gee, I wonder who the fuck it was. UBS Securities went out of business in 2009, I believe. And if not, I wonder why he left. Luciana Campos. Bitch has two years experience, but they put her in charge over a fucking BTG Pactual. What kind of experience do you think she has? They probably brought her over from Brazil, offered her a nice fucking apartment and a cushy job. Seen it. Seen it plenty of times. That's why she's got no experience. She's The fucking first day on the job was working at BTG Capital, Pactual U.S. Capital. Bitch is probably a fall girl, and she doesn't even know it. That's how fucking stupid these people are. They're going to throw this bitch under the bus. Seen that a hundred times. Look at Oh, I'm not going to name drop. I was about to name drop, but never mind. I don't want to get in a lawsuit. Not going to name drop. Don't name drop. All right, here we go. Shifting gears. This asshole again. Let me get rid of him. I don't want to look at him again. iShares MSCI Brazil down 0.84% today. Gee, I wonder why. Did you guys do well on your fucking AMC and GameStop today? Because I know I did. That was awesome. It was a beautiful fucking day. They were rolling over futures contracts because they've got to get it done before September 9th. They were delta hedging. There was some minor, it wasn't even a gamma squeezing whatsoever. There was minor delta hedging and then they were shorting it immediately, immediately after. Okay. That's why you saw the price go down in large increments all of a sudden. It wasn't anybody selling this shit. We tested the $47.20 range nine times today before we had to, before we were able to break through it. And every time we had higher highs and higher lows. It was beautiful on, on AMC and on GameStop. And, and, and I can't look, I'm looking forward to it more tomorrow. Why? Because even though they're separate stocks, it's pretty much the same stock because they're, they're basketed in all these fucking ETFs worldwide. And this isn't just one. I'm about to show you guys 100. Brazil exchange traded funds provide exposure to the largest economy in Latin America. Yeah, they sure do. Derivatives exposure to the tune of $190 trillion. Okay. Look at how low their year-to-date daily total return is. That's pretty fucking miserable for an ETF, isn't it? They're making a ton of money in other stocks, and they're losing a ton of fucking money in these stocks. It's quite simple. The reason that these ETFs are holding B3, Banco de Brazil, and shit like that is because underneath those companies that, these, that, these, that are holding these ETFs, there are further holdings as well of certain companies like AMC and GameStop. That's how we have BTG Pactual Asset Management, 22,000 shares here. Capitalo Investimentos, 397,900 here. And Constancia Investimentos with 720,000 held here, showing up on the Bloomberg terminal. That's how. It's not an accident. It's not a glitch. And it's not just one. It literally says multiple portfolios. So it's not just one portfolio like these other guys. You can see here Citadel Advisors. It's the Citadel Advisors LLC portfolio. Okay, so we know these assholes are going bankrupt. These assholes and these assholes that Shashquahana are going bankrupt. Simplex Trading, Capitalo, Constancia, BTG, all these fucks are going bankrupt. They're going to get thrown under the bus. They'll probably ask for a government bailout. I wonder if they'll, if they'll get it. Excuse me a second. 
How are we doing, guys? We having fun? Let's go. I got a lot more tabs. Ho, ho, ho. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves too far. Uh, if you got a sneak peek there, you're probably like, holy shit, you know what's coming. Or you might. Anyways, one more quick thing here. Holdings. Check this out. B3, SA, Brazil, Bolsa, Balcao. Every motherfucking one of these ETFs holds Bank of Brazil, B3, Banco de Brasil. Every fucking one. This is how they're somehow, somehow through these, through this one specifically, this is how they're, they're fucking shorting and manipulating AMC and GameStop. And I am calling on the entire Ape community, you know, Wired, Kringle Kitten, all you guys, AMC Bigums, all you cats that, that are fantastic out there on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, everything. Help me out here and let's figure this out even further because this is fucking big deal. And thank big thanks to Charlie for bringing MSCI to my head earlier because it didn't even occur to me that MSCI was in this shit until I, until I started looking up BTG Pactual. And then I saw that MSCI popped up and I was like, holy shit, Charlie, you're fucking onto it. Follow Charlie's vids. All right, let's go. Next. MSCA down 0.84% today. Yeah, because they got fucked up today by AMC and GameStop. They have 138 million shares of this fucking thing out there to play with. And that's how they're doing it. Okay. And the expense ratio is pretty, pretty low. It's only 0.59%. That's pretty good because Brazil is fucking corrupt as shit. <laughs> I got more proof of that coming up right now. And sorry, let's go here. Don't look great. Don't look great. What happened in January after the GameStop debacle? What's happening uh, three months ago in June? And what's about to happen to these assholes right now? <laughs> We're going to have like another camel's hump. So camel's hump, camel's hump, camel's hump, and camel's hump. And it's going to start coming down even further. It's not even going to go that far because the mother of all short squeezes is here. That's the MSCI Brazilian index. As you can see, it's down 19% in 2020. Why? Again, because we fucked them up with GameStop and AMC. Plain and simple. Check this out. Next page. My bad. What is Operation Car Wash? It was a criminal investigation by the Federal Police of Brazil. All right. It began in March of 2014, and it was headed by this guy, a judge, and it resulted in a thousand warrants. According to this task force, investigations implicate administrative members of the state-owned oil company Petrobras. Petrobras is also in a lot of these fucking ETFs and MSCI. Politicians from Brazil's largest parties were getting handouts and bribes presidents of chamber deputies in Brazil, the federal Senate, state governors, businessmen. Originally a money laundering investigation. It expanded to cover allegations of corruption in Petrobras, and it just went on and on and on. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. ETG Pactual was involved in the entire thing. This guy, Odebrecht. Emilio Odebrecht is one of the most notorious people. Novenor, previously Odebrecht SA, is Brazilian conglomerate headquartered in Salvador. Okay. This is a holding company for Constructora Norberto, and they're an engineering and contracting company. So this is a holding company. Okay. And the name Odebrecht has become shorthand for an unprecedented, unprecedented, regional bribery scandal between 2001 and 2016. So from 01 to 16, this guy paid $788 million in bribes across Latin America. It's the same thing that they're doing with BTG Pasquale, these assholes that are going to take the fucking fall, Capitalo Investimentos, Constancia Investimentos. All right? And he's paying bribes to get these fucking ETFs approved and moved around the country without the assets the underlying assets being AMC and GME in BlackRock or 
uh, Citibank's bank accounts or I mean uh, investment accounts, you know, sitting actually in their books because they have to hold on to them. And there is a way that they can trade them off in baskets as well. But they don't have any. We've seen this is even though BlackRock has some, they don't have anywhere near enough because there are hundreds of these ETFs. And Citibank only owns 61,400 total AMC shares and not many GameStop shares either. All right, guys. Let's keep going. Wait, 35 minutes. I'm trying to go as quick as I can. BTG. BTG is Latin America's. I'm sorry. Let me go here. According to investigators, uh, there was an arrest of this guy. The federal police arrested a senator named Delcidio de Amaral. He's a Brazilian politician. He represented someone in the federal Senate from 2013 to 2016. Why did he leave in 2016? Because of the scandal that occurred. The Nate Odebrecht scandal from 2001 to 2016. This guy was taking bribes. The, senator, the senior Brazilian senator and billionaire CEO was arrested for corruption. This guy and Andre Esteves of BTG Pactual SA was taken into custody. BTG Pactual. Oh, yeah. These guys. These guys. These guys, right? This guy. Luciana Park, William Sean Cox. Pactual, right? Out of Brazil, New York, and BTG Pactual Global. They're registered with FINRA. And like I said, this, this broad that they brought in there uh, to start as their, you know, financial supervisor has been working there two years. It was her first job and it's your first experience whatsoever in the field. What a joke. The corruption runs so deep. Put these fuckers in jail. Let's keep going. Okay. And Odebrecht told the General Brazil's office that he did all sorts of things with the workers' parties. This guy and this other guy, Marcelo Odebrecht, they were doing all sorts of crazy, crazy things with bribes to the of, you know, $780 million. And they came to find out that the Paradise Papers uh, were, were released and 13.4 million confidential electronic documents relating to offshore investments were leaked to German reporters. This guy, Frederick and Bastian Obermeier. So those are out there right now. And you guys can go to Wikipedia and help me look up the, Wik the Paradise Papers. Uh, some of the details were made public by November 5th, 2017. But I guarantee you there's a lot of information in there that nobody's ever thought to look at. The MOAS is going to happen in uh, quarter four, 2021. Somebody asked, so I had to answer. Oh, yeah, Petrobras. Marcelo Odebrecht. I hate that he has got my name, Marcelo. Uh, in connection with their ongoing probe into bribes paid in the Brazilian oil giant, Petrobras was arrested June 2015. And in 7th March, he was sentenced to 19 years and four months for paying $30 million in bribes to Petrobras in exchange for contracts and influence. So you think there's not shady deals going on? because they've already been convicted of it. Not just them, 13 million documents, thousands of, you know, the effects of Petrobras were, were terrible. They lost $17 billion because these people took bribes for the two, you know, $30 million here, 50 million there, they're cost 17 billion. That's the way that things work in these companies and in these countries. That's all right. Cause every fucking short and synthetic has to be bought back and has to be closed out eventually. And usually a stock market crash will make that happen. And that's what's coming. There's the Paradise Papers. Check it out. Odebrecht. Check it out. Operation Car Wash. Look it up for yourself. So, yeah. Uh, the chief of staff 
and uh, this senator were both arrested, and this banker, Andre Estevez, who's a Brazilian billionaire, uh, ranked the sixth in the net worth, according to Forbes magazine. And he's currently, guess who? The fucking senior partner at BTG Pactual, the biggest investment bank in Latin America. He was arrested. This guy, Andre Estevez, was directly arrested in 2016 in connection with Nestor Cervero's defense lawyer. They're, even their attorneys are fucking in this. Their attorneys were arrested. This current CEO of BTG Pactual, Andre Estevez, the senator, Del Cidio Amaral, they tried to obstruct justice. They made recordings showing the senator's intention to interfere in the investigation and offer the former executive escape so that he would not talk. So these guys were already arrested for this in the past. You think they're not fucking still doing it? This guy's got his net worth. This he's the sixth richest person in the world. Andre Estevez. He has $20.75 billion. He's about to fucking lose it all in the mother of all short squeezes. That's why they're desperate. That's why they're hanging on. And he's going to go to fucking prison when this is over. SEC, I want my fucking money, Gary Gensler. I'll let you digest this. MSCI Brazil, UCITS, ETF 1C. Guess where this is? Deutsche Bank. Luxembourg. Cheers, everybody. Love you guys and gals. MSCI Brazil TRN index. Vale, SA, same as the other MSCI, holds 19.75%. Petrobras, Petroleo, Brasileiro, Preferencial. Same thing, Brasileiro. What is that? The same petrol company that they just got fucking in cahoots with, with fucking Operation Car Wash, the Paradise Papers, Odebrecht, and this fucking asshole senator. This fucking lawyers, the CEO of BTG Pascal, Andre Estevez, all of these guys, they were already fucking arrested for it. And this lucky motherfucker probably got off with a slap on the wrist. wrist. And there was more, much, much more. Okay. Petrobras kickback scandal. This is why they went to jail already, and they're still doing it. Petrobras. Petrobras Petroleo. That means Petrobras gas company, basically, of Brazil, preferential. Ambev, WEG, same one as other MSCI. B3, Banco de Brasil, B3. You follow me, guys? Here's the cost. The current cost of borrow is 0.672. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be rude. My apologies. Anyways, look at their six month gains. Not good. They're, in every, they're being propped up by the rest of their indices or by the rest of their uh, holdings, I meant to say, excuse me, in this index.
equity and cash, currency and weight, allocation, Brazil. Okay. Securities held, Vale, Banco, Petro Brasil, B3, Ambev, WEG, the US dollar. They probably shorten it. What else are they holding? MSCI Brazil. They well, they were the United Kingdom. They probably rolled it over. Futures, MSCI Brazil I nine. MSCI Brazil nine futures September twenty one. Guys, do you see why that says zero? I just figured this out for the right fucking now. This is a futures contract that they're rolling over. MSCI Brazil nine futures contract September twenty one. They even named it. These dumb motherfuckers are not smart. They think they're fucking smart. That's why they went to prison, and that's why they're going to go to fucking jail again. You get this shit? Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. They rolled this shit over from the United Kingdom to Brazil called the MSCI Brazil 9 futures contract. And now it has zero dollars as of their most recent fucking 13F filing. So this is the newest one. And you want to see what? Let's go see when the fuck they started this bitch. Hmm. Sorry, it's taking me a while. This is a navigation date. Okay, so that's not what we're looking for. There you go. June 22nd, 2007. So they rolled over the MSCI shit into this one. And this one's been a long standing one that they've been holding. If they're using something so old, it means they're getting desperate. That's the only reason they would roll over a futures contract into something like this. That's so long standing. The only reason that I can think of. I hope an investment manager comes along and provides more clarity. That's the only thing I can think of with my experience. All right, guys, let's move on. What kind of blood? I can't remember. I'm so high. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, look, iShares MSCI Brazil. Who owns that shit? Who issues that shit? BlackRock. Motherfucking BlackRock. The world's largest asset manager will open up some of its iShares ETFs through locally listed Brazilian depository receipts, or BDRs, according to the New York-based firm. B3, Banco de Brasil, will list them. So BlackRock's the issuer. B3 is listing them. And Citigroup, Citibank, and other banks like this that I proved in the last video, and Citibank, for example, oh. 510 million for just for that one A2MC34 uh, stock ticker that we saw yesterday. And they owe a lot fucking more for everything that's in the BTG, Pactual Asset Management and Global Asset Management Multiple Portfolios for Capitalo and Constancia. Period. Look at how much is invested in this right now. That keeps growing and growing and growing because they need to keep fucking buying more of this shit more shares AMC and GameStop in order to maintain. And they can't maintain all the fucking shares. They have to maintain a six to one ratio. So for every six certificates, they need to maintain one share. And that's a lot because they got hundreds of these ETFs. I'm about to show that to you too. They got a lot more. BlackRock's going long because they need the shares. They need the shares to be able to fucking sell these. They want to sell these ETFs. Okay. They want to allow market sell them to like uh, you know to uh, allow market makers and whatnot to sell them and and to use them and, and to short them, and BlackRock is issuing them and making a killing on it, making a fucking killing. And then when this shit gets bought back, BlackRock's going to be hedging with the money they make from, is hedging with the money they make off AMC and GameStop going to the fucking moon. And then they're just going to be able to buy uh, you know hedge off the uh, pay off these positions if they had to, you know close anything out and it'll be no big deal for them. Because. And BlackRock is getting back at Citadel for the Tesla squeeze. So Tesla is going to squeeze a little bit, but AMC and GameStop are going to squeeze a fuckload because they're held in hundreds of these ETFs and 
hundreds of Brazilian depository receipts where the banks are supposed to and legally required to maintain a six to one ratio, six certificates to one share of assets in their books at all times. And literally the word quote unquote blocked in their account. That's what the regulations say. So they're playing both sides and they're going to make money on both sides. BlackRock's going to fuck Citadel and I don't give a shit. I'm fine with it because I'm going to get mine and I hope you guys get yours. Banco de Brasil. This is the minutes from their August 10th, 2020 and uh, July 5th, 2021 meeting. What does it say? What do they discuss? Check this shit out. How many do they have? 59? 59 MSCI ETFs. MSCI uh, BlackRock, Canadian MSCI Emerging Markets Index Fund. BlackRock, MSCI ACWI ESG Focus Index. ACWI EXUSA Emerging Markets Index ETF. Uh, X Trackers, All World. X Trackers, does that ring a bell? Where were we at with the fucking Deutsch? MSCI Brazil. This is X Trackers right here. Issuing company, X Trackers. MSCI Brazil, US UCITS ETF 1C. Issued by BlackRock or X Trackers, I mean, here out of Luxembourg through DWS Investment. Uh, the depository bank is State Street Bank International, Luxembourg branch. So it's going to be companies around the world that are going bankrupt and companies around the world that are taking power from other companies. We got more. iShares Core Emerging Markets, MSCI International, et cetera. I'm not going to name them all. You know what? Let's just click through. This is this. That's how many there is. That's how fucking many there is. All right. That's what they were fucking discussing. All 59 of these fucking ETFs. And we can go through every goddamn one of them. But we're never going to make it through all of them before the mother of all short squeeze happens. No fucking way. Because it's right around the right on the horizon. I showed you guys earlier what the debt ceiling was and how the US, US Treasury is going to run out of money between September 10th and maybe September 16th, 17th if they're lucky. Congress doesn't come back till September 20th. They've got to fight over the infrastructure bill because 100 Republicans have already said that they're not going to fucking vote yes on that bullshit. September 1st, NSC... Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Diamond Hand. NSCC005 goes into effect. Hedge funds are going to be required to maintain 250000 for offshore holding companies. October 1st, all banks are going to have to hold $1 trillion minimum, and, may, and, and they've been undergoing daily stress tests by the Federal Reserve. We are in such good shape. The futures contracts are going from now through September 9th. They're being rolled over. And that's what's causing this Delta hedging and this FOMO buying. And it's going to cause this shit to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And I'm fucking buying and buying and buying every goddamn dip. I'm making a ton of fucking money. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. I hope you are too. Uh, you know what? Friday might be an interesting day. I would say buy the dip for sure. But they're going to try to short the stock on Friday. Okay. Uh, because uh, they're going to want that contract. I'm sorry. They're going to want as few out of the money, as few in the money call options as possible. But either way, uh, we're going to be seeing some good green up, green uh, days for the next few weeks until the MOAS because their government's going to default on this shit. And next thing you know, it's going to cause margin calls because the stock market's going to crash. People are going to take their money out. They're going to get scared. The invest bankments are going to sell off. They're going to the market's going to fucking straight up crash. They're going to take all sort lose all sorts of liquidity. They're going to have one hour to meet the new requirements from the NSCC and the DTCC to maintain their margin position. And if they don't, the computers are automatically going to buy back. And if I set my share to $99,000 a share for sell and everybody else does too, then the fucking computer will come all the way up there and fetch it. That's why it's a fucking theoretically plausible situation for these stocks to go up to 500,000 to a million dollars a share. It doesn't matter if it takes a day, a week or a month or three months or six months, but it could happen. It's fucking theoretically possible because they have $190 trillion in liabilities, unrealized notional losses. And the top four banks, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, and Citibank owe 
89% of that, which is $169 trillion. And those companies combined only have $24 trillion in assets. Cheers. Love you guys. We're going to be fucking rich. All right, let's move on. I, I, I understand Spanish and Portuguese, but I'm not going to ask you guys to read that shit. Fuck that. Let me get that out of here. Uh, all right, what do we got? iShares MSCI Brazil ETF. What do we have down here? What are the holdings? Petrobras. $247 million in Petrobras. But remember what happened last time? Petrobras took a hit. Their fucking stock. Uh, these guys in Petrobras got arrested through the scandal. With the senior, this guy, the C, the senator from Brazil, the billionaire CEO, owner of BTG Pactual, the guy who owns this company, who has multiple portfolios, you know, Capital Investimentos, Constancia. All these guys are crooks. They've been to jail for this before. $88 million in fucking bribes throughout all throughout Central America, causing something. And there was a leak of the Paradise Papers, which released over 13.4 million documents. Yeah. Yeah, this is a recurring thing. They're literally this name, the name of these people associated become shorthand for unprecedented regional bribery scandals. Between 2001 and 2016, they paid $780 million in bribes. They have also been the central to the Operation Car Wash scandal, which we just talked about. On June 2015, Brazilian authorities arrested the former CEO, Marcelo Odebrecht, in connection with their ongoing pro uh, probes into bribes with a Brazilian oil giant, Petrobras. On March 2016, he was sentenced to 19 fucking years in jail for paying $30 million to Petrobras. And now they're doing this shit. They're putting all these fucking things together. They're in B3 Brazil are the holdings in these ETFs. The, these, oh, these original holdings, let me go to the oldest one. Re most recently, what did they fucking finish? MSCI Brazil index, September 21. We just found another one. This is a futures contract. Be clear. M, the, the stock ticker, MCBU1, B MSCI Brazil Index, September 2021, cash and or derivatives, futures contracts. We found another one. And they rolled it over because it expires September 9th. And there's more and more and more of these motherfuckers. If you don't know what a futures contract, here's an example of what futures contracts look like and, and how the rolling over of this happens. Futures used to hedge against the equity total return swaps, ETRs, are settled prior to the first notice day. This exposes the risk of the ETRs for the upcoming futures expirations. So they last for almost three months. They have a, now they're so tight, they're so they're so close to uh, losing their shit and going bankrupt that this, this window for them to, to cover has become so small. It's almost two weeks, barely two weeks. It happened from Feb February 23rd when GameStop ran up from uh, $23 all the way up to uh, $350, $360. Okay. It happened in a two week period. And then they fucking shorted it some more with these ETFs and all these other funds. And they played some games, made some money off call option, uh, calls and puts and fucking, uh, selling options. And then they shorted it a fuckload more, made some more ETFs. Here we go for the next three month period. And they ran up from May 26th. They ran up and ran up and ran up all the way through June 10th. And GameStop ran from $150 to $350 again. And that was a little baby one. And here we go. Big, giant fucking short candle. And then they fucking shorted it for a long time, made money off call options, et cetera. And then they don't have to worry about hedging risk of ETR positions until the next first notice day. But they do have to worry about hedging their positions with these individual stocks and other, other uh, such you know BDRs that might be in effect at that time. So there's still plenty of potential during this three-month period for the stocks to run up at any time. But it's getting to, towards the end of the line. We're right here now. In the on September through uh, September 9th period, where we're going to see some super high volatility, and you've seen what we did today. We had great numbers with AMC and GameStop today, and yesterday, and the day before, all because of this, and all because these guys are over leveraged to 190 trillion dollars, five times the world's GDP. They're going to bankrupt the world's goddamn economy, and, and they're they're doing it in illegal ways. BTG Pactual is owned by fucking criminals, you know, who have been to prison for this shit, as we just stated. Let's go. I'm almost there. Three, two thirds of the way there. Sorry, so long, guys. 
But this stuff is not easy to explain. The more that I fucking get through the layers, I hope here, there's since there's so many moving parts, I hope that you understand it more clearly every time that I repeat myself. And I'm not doing it to be to be. I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm just doing it to try to clarify the situation in case you didn't understand it the first time because there's so many moving parts with this, but it all clearly and substantially linked through SEC documents, 13F filings, Bloomberg terminals, and other fucking such things that you have seen for yourself. BPAC 11, Banco, BTG, Pactual, SA. This is, for example, one of the things that there's the holdings in this motherfucker right here. It's BPAC 11. Okay. And look at all everything that they've got in here. And they can play with all of these. Some of these make them money and some of these lose them money. And that's okay. And look, in this one, they've got $5.7 million in cash as well. And they've got XTSLA, the one that Charlie's Vids proved that they were using to fuck AMC and GameStop about a month and a half ago. Go look it up because he showed it to us a month and a half ago. And I'm showing it to you now, now that they rolled it over. BlackRock, Cash, Fund, Treasury, SL Agency. They were using this shit for reverse repo. They were abusing that shit on the RRP. Go watch Charlie's video about it, XTSLA. Now there's nothing left in it because they rolled it over into this shit. iShares MSCI Brazil ETF and all those other 52 and all those other iShares that I showed you. Every single fucking one of them, guys and girls. And here's one of the things that they're using. And look, well, that's what happened to it. It got shorted. That's why this is going down. So they're using other companies. They're shorting other companies in these ETFs, baskets, just to get back at AMC and GME because they're so they're in such bad shape with them because they over leveraged and they thought they were going to go out of business. And us Ape says, I love video games and I love fucking movies and I'm not letting them go. Constancia Investimentos. This, uh, they had some okay information here on Reddit uh, from El Patron, but I didn't really find much that, that worked out, but I, I was looking to see what I could come up with and not a whole lot. But Constancia Investimentos does have funds all over the country and all over the world. The partners and administrators here are these people right here and other shell companies. Constancia Investimento is right there. And who has holdings with these assholes? Banco de Brasil with investimentos through Credit Suisse. Do you guys remember Archegos Capital who recently went bankrupt? Because I do. Because I fucking do. See, they're showing MSCI returns. Versus world percentage returns. And they use these when they need to. For example, during the 2000 market crash, 2011, 2013, you know, uh, to, to short stocks and to fuck with them as much as they can. Because the CFTC are fucking crooks. Who's the CFTC? The Commodities Futures and Trading Commission. The Commodities Futures and Trading Commission is headed by this new asshole. The, the guy who used to work at the CFTC now works for Citadel as, as of April. And the guy who Biden put in place is the one, Ron Beanham. That's the asshole who's selling this, uh, who's uh, actually the one uh, doing this shit. Where is he at? Come on, Ron Beanham. I got you over here. I called him out so much and this pussy wouldn't reply. The, the CFTC recently provided temporary action through no relief uh, from certain financial reporting requirements to bank swap dealers, but you don't really have to worry about it because this didn't apply to hedge funds anyways. This mostly replied it. It mostly replied to, you know, commercial banks and shit. So it's not really going to affect things negatively too bad, especially because they're already fucked anyway. They're just trying to prevent the September 1 from being a MOAS, but it doesn't matter because everything that's going on with the debt ceiling and, and inflation and unemployment, real estate market that's about to crash eviction moratorium that's expired and was ruled unconstitutional by the Senate because it was, unfortunately and sadly. 
Uh, a lot of people are going to lose their apartments and a lot of people are going to lose their homes because it's going to take, they're not going to be able to still pay their mortgages. So everything's going to crash all at once and it's still going to cause the mother of all short squeezes. This asshole, Ron Beanham. Rostin Beanham. He is the acting chair of the Commodities, Futures, and Trading Commission. And I don't know about you, but I think this guy looks like a goddamn crook. I think he looks like a fucking criminal. And yeah, Charlie had a CFTC video today, as did AMC Biggums. They did a great job explaining it, so I won't. Let's fuck the CFTC. And fuck this guy. He was put in place uh, by Joe Biden. And the guy who uh, took who the guy who was current who was working at the CFTC previously now works at Citadel Securities. Look it up on Wikipedia. Look up Rostin Beanham, and you fucking see it. The Commodity Futures and Trading Commission is independent agency of the United States. Ready to go. It previously it, it is uh now Ross and Beanham, I should say. Let's see here. The current commissioner expires June 19, 2021. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the guy who left. My my bad. This is the guy who just left. There's another asshole. No, no, his term got extended here. But anyways, this guy, Brian Quintenas. He now works for uh, Citadel. No, maybe it wasn't this guy. I have him on my fucking Twitter, but I'll pull him up for you anyway. Okay, just to make things easier. I'll pull it up directly from there. Had the right one there. So Dodd Frank in Amer in the United States uh, prevents the companies from doing a lot of things that are, they're doing overseas. But the, and the SEC has regulation here in the United States. But the SEC has no regulation in Brazil. That's regulated by the CFTC. Okay, so the CFTC are the ones who are in charge of these futures contracts. Okay, and agricultural commodities. So that's why the SEC doesn't have authority, even though they implemented, you know, Dodd-Frank Wall Street reform to regulate these swap markets. Okay. Back up here. Here's an example. If you guys didn't see it in the last video of, of a margin call that, in my opinion, happened to Citadel uh, on July 30th, July 29th, they sold off 7.21% of their Amazon stake even though they had 25 billion gain in quarter over quarter profits. They sold off a small amount of Microsoft. They sold off 1.8%, 6% of Bidu, 1.43% of NVIDIA. All of their holdings were down and Pinterest uh, was down 19%. That was also one of their top holdings. Okay. Today, we had some very interesting situations. Look at what happens with AMC and GameStop. Even when we're at all-time highs, like 445, there are 562 contracts that people are selling at 445 apiece and only 166 people at 425 trying to bring the price down. If that's not bullish as fuck, I don't know what is. All these people say, fuck you. I know what I'm worth. I know what this contract is worth right this minute, and it's not worth 425. We're all sticking here at 445, and you're going to wait there, and you're, or you're, you're going to come to my price. That's how bullish AMC and GameStop is. And it was up 25% today, this uh, December 17th, 2021, $145 call option. Uh, today, I did call an interesting rise in the price. Uh, let me see here. But I kind of lost it here. Let me see. It was 1054. I called a run up uh, thanks to some help through due diligence with some friends on Discord uh, that around RRP time, we we're going to have a nice run up. And they definitely gave us uh, some short attacks. 
This is an example of what a short attack looks like. Uh, having normal price action somewhat through the algorithmic trading and the dark pools that they have. And then immediate hardcore, massive spikes of sales. That volume that uh, is, not, is not normal for reaching a retest nine times. Most stocks will break a retest on the second or third try. And then here's the 10th time. The 10th retest, we got up there. The algorithm said, nope, we need to come down. People bought it back. And even still, we went up high. And it got fucking super short of the, in the following minute. This is on the one-minute chart. This is a one-minute candle, okay? And you can see how large these fucking shorts are at once. And even still, people kept buying it back and, and, they, you know, and so on. And that was, uh, you know, pretty early in the day. AMC ended up and GameStop ended up a lot higher than 6.4% for the day. And they're going to go higher tomorrow, in my opinion. Another new high. Every single time it was a high. Every single time it was a high. It kept retesting and going higher highs and higher lows. All right, one second. Let me just click on these. All right, guys. Let's go back over here to where we were. Uh, let's let's just round out the video here, you know, uh, because I've got, for example, the further information on the investment portfolio for Constancia Fundamento, you know, and, and they've got a lot of uh, bad bad stuff. Check this out. Look at what's going on with them. Don't look. At, this is the previous years, but look at what happened in 2020. It took a 6.23 percent, and then don't and look at the last month. The last month they're down almost four percent. The last two months they're down almost three percent. Three months ago. They were up 8.9, 5.27, and 4.36 in between the futures contracts rollovers and the super bullish bull market all-time highs that we've seen. But now every time they have a three-month period, look, six months ago, they were down seven, and they were fine. Eight, they were down 6.24, and nine months ago, they were down 4.45% because they're taking a fucking beating every time these future contracts roll around and losing more and more money. And then they're trying to gain it back after the fact through selling call options, deep out of the money call options that people are lottery ticketing money on options are fine, but don't buy deep out of the money lottery tickets anymore. Buy them a fucking few weeks out. You'll save yourself some money, you know, and, and it'll be a little bit safer in my opinion, not financial advice. Thank you guys. Appreciate you girls and, and boys. Thank you very much for joining and for coming through. That's, that's the amount. That's basically all I want to show you here. You know, here's an accumulated, accumulated gross balance for example, and it, it's not great. It, it's not fantastic for the amount of, uh, it should be a lot higher for these kinds of gains that they're posting in 2006, 17, 18, and 19. But because of how bad that things have been in the last several months and in 2020, their gains are not anywhere near as close to, you know, 50% or 32% as they were previously. And then they're just going to continue to get beat up. And where are they putting a lot of the money? Fucking government. Reverse repurchase. Repurchase, repurchase, RRP, time deposits, okay, credit bonds, derivatives. So I hope that clears a lot of things up for you guys. And the same thing goes for this one uh, at Capital Investimentos, you know. Because these guys are also linked to Citadel. It's translating to English at the moment. This is their bullshit. They got these cheap ass shitty little websites. You want to know why? Because these are just fucking holding companies. You know, they may have started after the fucking market crash, but that's because they need a new holding companies. Dot Frank forced them to go overseas. When Dodd-Frank was implemented and in the talks of Dodd-Frank, even before it was implemented, these guys realized that they had to go away from the SEC and go with some more who's they've got money in their pocket like the SF CFTC. So that is why we are moving in these guys' directions and do not fall for their bullshit. These are all fucking synthetic shares. These are all fucking synthetic shares. And this another 720,000 synthetic shares right here. So right here, you've got a million plus synthetic shares in a company that only has under 80 million shares of fucking stock. 
GameStop, GME. What does that tell you guys? What does that tell you? And this is filtered by puts, by the way. Okay. That's why it says C slash B. That's call slash puts. Filtered by puts. Only puts showing up right there. BTG Pactual Asset, Capitalo Investimentos, Constancia Investimentos. These fucks are screwed. And why? Because they've over leveraged way too goddamn hard to the point where they owe so much money that they will never, ever, ever fucking get out of this. And they are desperately fucking trading in dark pools to try to get it. Three, three trillion dollars in assets, 53 trillion dollars almost in derivatives for JP Morgan. 300 billion in Goldman Sachs assets, 50 trillion in derivatives, unrealized losses. Citibank, 1.684 trillion in assets, 46 trillion in unrealized losses, and go on and on and on. And look at their future swaps 1.4 trillion, 1.438 trillion, 543 billion, 200 billion, 249 billion. Fuck Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, Goldman, ba Goldman Sachs, J JP Morgan. I fucking took all my money out of the bank account. I've only got uh, my business accounts, and that's because I absolutely have to. But I fucking liquidated all my other funds and put it straight into my goddamn interactive broker's investment account into AMC and GameStop. Because I'm going to be goddamn rich of it. And I made a lot of goddamn money this month this already. But check this out, guys. That money that, that we just looked down there, they're trading it all on dark pools. Foreign exchange, almost 100% in the dark pools. Look at the interest rate, the RRP bullshit. You know, between uh, 25, whatever, our Wells Fargo doesn't do much in it. It looks like these other cats are very heavily invested in the RRP. Look at the equity, uh, equity uh, total return swaps. These are those total return swaps. Morgan Stanley is fucking us 100%. HSBC is fucking us with 100% of the trading in the dark pools of these equity total return swaps that they're trying to fucking keep the price down, and they still can't fucking do it. If you just showed up and you don't know what these total return swaps are, they are this. One second. Futures, contracts, equity, total return swaps. Every three months, bought back, two-week period, huge runs up, hundreds of dollars run up in GameStop and, and many, many dollars in AMC, and it's getting out of control. They cannot control it anymore. They will never be able to control it again. The All these issues with Hurricane Ida, the debt ceiling, inflation, unemployment, the real estate market, stock market, everything that's fucking collapsing on them right now, the world, China, COVID, et cetera, they're fucked. The government will collapse. The U.S. Treasury does not have enough money to get through, to get even to get to once Congress comes back to discuss the infrastructure bill in September 20th. The United States is fucked. The stock market is fucked. Real estate market is fucked. We're going to make a shitload of goddamn money on these fucking stocks because they're going to the fucking moon. It might take a day, might take a week, might take some months, but I'm fucking sticking in there and I'm going to keep dumping everything I fucking got into it. Equity swaps, almost 100% in the fucking dark pools. Fuck these guys. I'm fucking done. That's it, guys. I'm done. I can't do this. Soon. <laughs>